My husband confessed his feelings for a student, shattering my trust in our marriage of eight years. Now, as I face an uncertain future, I'm learning to reclaim my self-worth and move on. My husband and I, both 35 years old, met in college. We fell in love and got married eight years back. I gave birth to our daughter in 2020. My husband is a professor at this med school, he's a doctor himself. My friend Sarah also works in the same college, and she's in the same department as my husband. A few months back in December, Sarah took me out for lunch and told me that she suspected something's going on between my husband and this med student, 25 female. She claimed she'd seen both of them give yearning looks to each other. She said that she's known my husband for so long, and she'd never seen him talk to any other woman like this, that he'd been so aloof around women all these years, but it's just different with this one girl. At that moment, I had laughed at her face. I remember telling her that she's jumping to conclusions based on these supposed yearning looks. That's why I didn't tell you before, she had said. I was confused too. It's not like he goes out of his way to talk to her, but whenever they do talk, it's like watching a slow burn romance movie. She looks at him like he's Brad Pitt and he looks at her the way he used to look at you. I remember the exact words because they sting. Internally, I was breaking down. Externally, I just smiled and told her that she's probably overthinking. That night, I casually mentioned this to my husband. I was laughing at the absurdity, and I expected him to join in and deny the wild possibility that he's in love with a student. But he didn't. Instead, he looked at me, all teary-eyed and said, I'm sorry. I can't get her out of my mind. I've tried, trust me. I should have told you sooner. But I thought I could save our relationship. I really wanted to. I asked him if he cheated on me. He said no. He said he didn't even talk to her. Nor did they have any contact outside of college, and that he completely understood how morally depraved it is to try and pursue a relationship with a student. She wrote him a letter about a year back, confessing her love for him, and he had told her that even though he was into her, nothing would come out of it. Apparently that was when the yearning looks had started. I honestly don't remember how I reacted then. I think I just started packing and came to live with my parents along with my daughter. I've been living with my parents since then. Half of me wanted him to come and beg for forgiveness. But he never did. He comes by sometimes to spend time with our daughter but that's it. He never talks about the elephant in the room, nor do I bring it up. I keep checking that girl's social media. She's insanely beautiful, almost doll-like, and intelligent. I can't help but think that someone like him should be with someone like her. He's always been very good-looking and I'm more of a plain Jane. She's Meredith to Derek. I don't know what to do. What do I even tell people? I don't even know who I am without him. Some part of me still wants him to come back. Edit. I've decided to talk to him. I know I've been avoiding this for months but after reading all the responses, I feel it's time I rip that band-aid out. I'm going over to our house. I'll update on what happens. Too long. Didn't read. Husband just admitted that he's in love with this young woman who is also his student. She loves him too. Relevant comments, Moss Valley. So he didn't actually cheat? He has a crush. If I understand that right, he hasn't betrayed you yet. Crushes sometimes happen that don't mean the relationship is over. Get therapy with him. Opie answer. I mean, cheating for me isn't just physical. He's had crushes in the past and I've had crushes in the past, but we'd always been up front and then laughed about it. This one feels like a betrayal because he was attracted to someone for more than a year. This someone gave him a freaking love letter, he told her that he's attracted to her, and not once did he mention it to me. That's a huge breach of trust for me and I don't think I can look past it. Opie answer. Added more about her friend Sarah and what she observed I know. He said he entirely stopped interacting with her after the letter incident. It does seem absurd but even my friend Sarah corroborated this. She said he never went out of his way to talk to her before, and then almost entirely stopped talking. Given that Sarah and him are in the same department 24 to 7, and that she noticed something as small as them giving each other looks, I'm sure she would have noticed anything out of the ordinary. I've had access to his phone and his passwords throughout, and he wasn't texting or calling her either. That's why this feels weird laughing out loud. Forward slash forward slash update. For those who don't want to read the boring details. In short, I have decided to go ahead with the divorce. Long story. The day I made the post, I met up with Sarah for dinner. I thanked her for telling me about my husband and the student, and also for being such a good friend. I asked her about my husband. She said there's nothing unusual. He's been a bit withdrawn and aloof with everyone lately but that's about it. Yesterday I went over to my house unannounced. He was there alone in his office. I told him I wanted to talk. He said he'll explain everything. So apparently this woman has had a crush on him for two years. Her friends ship her with him. She would stare at him during her rotations and would blush whenever he looked or talked to her. Back then, he didn't think much of it. Many girls have had crushes on him, and he always ignored them. About 1.5 years back, 
They were in the same research group thing. I don't know how this works, but there were five to six people along with these two. Because of this, they had to spend some time together working. And it was then that he started noticing her. He went into detail about how he was impressed with her intelligence, blah, 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 and her beauty, blah, blah, blah. The moment he realized that he had a crush on her, he dropped out of the research thing. This was a year ago. Few weeks later, she gave him the letter confessing that she has feelings for him. The first thing he told her after reading it was, you can get into trouble because of this. She didn't care, she wanted an answer. Is it all in my head? She had asked, to which he replied with, it's not just in your head, but nothing can come out of it. I hope you understand. That was the last time they interacted. According to him, the yearning looks Sarah described were more of awkward eye contacts than anything else. He told me that even though he is still attracted to her, he has no intention of pursuing any sort of relationship with her regardless of whether we stay together or not. He said he's willing to change his job and go to therapy. I told him to give me some time to think about it. To sum up, one, this has been going on for three years. Not once did he mention anything to me. Two, the student and him spent a considerable amount of time last year working on the research. Three, he told her he liked her back lol. Four, he's still very much attracted to her and that's why I've decided to go ahead with a divorce. I don't think I can trust this man again. And a relationship without trust isn't something I am interested in. I've told my parents about it. They're not exactly on board but they're still supportive. I've also contacted my lawyer about the same. It's gonna be a long process I believe. That's it. I believe this is my last update. Too long. Didn't read he's still attracted to her. I won't ever trust him again. We're getting a divorce. Relevant comments. Chance. Reason. 6617. It's a crush. He is not in love. OP answer. That doesn't matter. He crossed a line he shouldn't have by telling her he likes her. This is not an exit. Literally. I can't believe these comments. He's gushing about her beauty and intelligence. He told her the feeling was mutual. He could have easily denied it to her and then kept his distance but he liked the attention. OP answer. I mean to be fair to him. He wasn't exactly gushing about her. I kept asking and he kept answering. Deal breaker for me was him telling her the feeling is mutual. All but look LMAO these dumbass comments. You too hasty it's a crush chill. Like staff of the man literally said. I can't get her out of my head. If he was wife he would have changed jaw proactively. Not wait until now. He let it develop to a point he can't take his mind off of her and y'all saying it's no big deal. You guys obviously never had a real relationship OP answer. He said he didn't change his job earlier because quote, I'm a doctor and there are people counting on me. I couldn't just walk out on them one day. He said he's willing to change his job if that's what it takes to make you stay. New update for context, my ex-husband is a doctor and he was in love with a student for years. She was into him too and wrote him a love letter etc. When I confronted him, he told me it was a crush and that he put a stop to it as soon as he could and that nothing physical ever happened but the damage was done. You can read the posts on my account if you're interested but that's the gist. Nothing more there. So I decided to take our daughter and permanently move to my parents' house. We're in the middle of separating now. A lot of people have told me to forgive him and I've myself debated if I'm taking the correct step or not. But the trust is gone and I don't think I want to be in a relationship with someone like him. It's taking a lot of strength to do this. I have lost all self-esteem. Fact is that I was always insecure of how my ex was way above my league, about how I was lucky to have him, how people often said he could have done so much better. Over the years my insecurities had disappeared. Now it's all back. He's attracted to someone so beautiful, so incredibly intelligent, and obviously she's also into him. I keep looking at her social media all the time, obsessing over her. There was an Instagram story she uploaded where she was with my ex-husband and a few others, and it felt like someone stabbed me in the heart. He looked happy, and he'd never looked that happy in years. I got tired of being pathetic, and even complained to the hospital management about the inappropriate relationship between her and my ex. All I got in response was that they can't take any steps without concrete proof. Now my sad ass wants to snitch about her to her parents. To get her in trouble. To make her suffer. I know this is unhealthy. I'm in therapy but ick, I don't think I'm healing. I hate that I have to be sad and heartbroken over that man and he doesn't seem to care. He stopped coming to visit our daughter too. I wish he would have cared. I wish he would have fought for me. I wish he would have not tossed aside our decade-long relationship for her. I hate this. I hate everything. Relevant comments. Mayor Charles Coulon. If you wanted to go full petty, you could put them to her training program. Medical schools and teaching institutions frown on faculty learner romantic relationships and consider it an abuse of power. Your husband likely had to formally evaluate her and her. Their affair, even emotional, 
would tip the fairness of those evals compared to the other students. I have seen married doctors fired for this kind of behavior. Also tell her she sure as shit didn't mind hurting you, or your daughter don't roll over because of a misplaced sense of loyalty to your D-bag ex OP answer. I did reach out to her training program. They basically told me that they can only take steps if I have any tangible proof, which I don't. I asked my friend Sarah who works in the same department as him to also complain, but she's not keen on the idea. Icky. Final comment from OP. I feel like I've already wasted so many years on him. We met when we were 20. I thought I knew him so well, but now it's like I didn't know him at all. I don't understand what's changed TBH, he's a very good-looking guy. All throughout our relationship, there have been many girls who had crushes on him. He used to be so chill about all of it. Never made me feel insecure. Never lost his mind like this. Ick what's happened honestly? Does the ex FaceTime or contact the daughter? It's a one-hour flight. He does FaceTime with her daily, but he won't do it if I'm in the room. So he does it when my mom dad is looking after her. He's not reached out about alone time. He's only said he's waiting for the court orders regarding the custody. He doesn't want to see me at all. We had a big fight after I reported him and that girl to her college, and he said it's not correct for our daughter to see us fighting like that again, so he's not gonna visit. My husband is in love with a student, he is a piece of trash, and I have no fucking idea what to do. New update. Now to the next story, story two. My husband is fucking in love with another woman and wants to try polyamory. I feel like I'm the third person in my own story. Hi. I've been married to my hubby for four years and we've been together for 12 years. After a lot of financial struggle we bought a house, and we are now planning to get kids. Thing is a few months ago my husband felt sick and had to stay home for a while. He decided to pick up an online game, and started having weekly sessions with a group of players. Among them is a girl, 30 I think. And long story short, he fell in love with her. He broke down crying a month ago and admitted it. He told me it built up so gradually he didn't understand how he felt until it was too late. They started texting privately after meeting, and eventually had one-on-one -on -one calls together. Then at some point he said, she told him she was in love with him and he realized it was mutual. He said he told her it was impossible but loved her too. They tried to be just friends but they couldn't resist and continued to show affection for each other. He showed me the text but also ventured into sexting. She asked if she could meet him face to face but he refused. So he told me all of this, apologized over and over again and told me he couldn't control himself and while he loved us both, it was me he would choose no matter what. I was still very upset and slept at a friend's that night to gather my thoughts. I decided to forgive him because he clearly felt guilt and wanted to work it out. I told him that while I was deeply hurt, I still appreciated him coming forward to me and being honest about what happened. We got into long conversations about how we were feeling in our relationship. I accepted he could love someone else but said I didn't like how he handled it. He agreed. And then yesterday, he asked if I was comfortable opening up the marriage to polyamory. He said he still wanted to live with me and have kids but can't erase nor ignore the feelings he has for her. He says he wants to do it right and let us both see other people, with clear boundaries and communication, and still be present for one another. I'm gonna be honest, it made me very uncomfortable at first. We have several friends who are poly, I know more or less how it works, but I never really thought about getting into it myself. I am not against it, it just never crossed my mind before. I am trying to think it through but it's a lot to take in. Sorry my writing is probably messy but it's kind of hard to focus. I guess it's too early to decide and we have a lot more to discuss beforehand but still. Could you guys give me your opinions on this? Thanks a lot. Top comments commenter 1. I be divorcing so fast. Dog of the bone. So he cheated and now wants to be able to keep cheating by calling it poly oh, oh. Come on. Do not have kids with this man for the love of God. And if you have any self-respect you'll be serving him divorce papers as soon as possible. Sorry your husband is a cheating ass. Swamp cats, you got married under the assumption you would remain monogamous, he is trying to fundamentally change the nature of your relationship. If I were you, I would drop any attempts at conceiving and figure out your next steps. Personally, I would not stay with someone who desired an open relationship. You need to decide if it's something you're willing to entertain or not. Update 1. Hey guys first off sorry I didn't reply to all your comments. I am very thankful for them. They helped me realize hard, but fair truths about the whole situation. I waited for a bit to think about it all and had multiple long discussions with my husband. I wanted to confront him before making a final decision. To answer some of your questions, the other girl wanted to meet him but they never did. Partly because my husband refused but honestly mostly because she lives too far from here. I still got checked for sexually transmitted diseases though and I'm clean. Yay. As for our polyamory friends, they apparently were the ones who suggested he go down the polyamory road. I stopped talking to them for now. 
I'll deal with the bigger problem first. I told him his actions hurt me deeply, and that while I appreciated him admitting his affair, it was still infidelity. I told him what you guys said, that turning it into polyamory was merely greenlighting the affair after the fact, that polyamory should be built on mutual trust and communication, which he already broke, that I didn't feel respected. It destroyed him. He said he already knew deep down but didn't want to admit it, neither to me nor to himself. We both screamed and cried a lot. He finally admitted he wanted to open the marriage for selfish reasons. He is very sorry. He cut off contact with the other girl, let me fully access his computer and phone, and now wants to go to counseling to repair our relationship and marriage. He has shown me a lot of affection and attention since then, although he admits to himself it's sometimes out of guilt and not just out of pure love. And now I want to make it work too, but am I? Or is it a sunk cost fallacy? I don't know. Our first session is in two months, the earliest we could get. And every day I change my mind. Literally yesterday I wanted to leave him, while today I think it's worth giving it a try. Because we've known each other for so long. We understand each other on a very deep level, share a lot of interests, and have already built so much together. He was there for me during hard parts of my life. He took responsibility for his actions, and is really trying. Plus, if I leave him, I'd have to start my life nearly from scratch. Find a new place to live, go back to dating for the first time in 12 years. I don't want to lose everything. It sounds very hard and scary. Am I not too old for this? But at the same time, that's a form of denial, isn't it? It doesn't matter if those years were good. It's not going to be the same. Even if he gains my trust back. Even if I forgive him. I'll never forget. I think he is genuinely remorseful. But isn't it too late for that? I am too empathetic. Him being present now doesn't erase what was done. Do I want to stay not because I still believe in this relationship, but because I don't have the strength to ask for a divorce? Because it's the easy choice, some kind of codependency. I have no idea. I can picture both paths clearly, and it's tearing me apart. I am lost. Maybe even more than I was when I wrote my previous post. I've lost sleep and appetite, and I'm not sure I enjoy anything in my life anymore. I booked an appointment with a psychologist for me alone to help with this whole thing. I am sorry. At this point, I am rambling. I know I am the only one who can decide what's okay and comfortable for me or not. It's ultimately my choice and my choice only. The emotional hell I am going through just makes thinking about that choice very hard and paralyzing. I'll go to both therapies and try to see what to do from here. I'll try to update, but it's probably going to take a while. I am sorry. I want to thank you again for your support, and I am sending you guys a lot of love. Forward slash forward slash edit. A couple of infos I should have mentioned but didn't because putting all of that into writing without omitting something is much harder than I thought. He cut off contact with her because once he told him he was married and wanted us both, she just ran away and broke up with him. There are times since then where my husband starts feeling sad or angry because of what's basically withdrawal. And for that he's smart, least sensible enough not to blame me. What kind of marriage did we have before this crisis? It will sound so naive. It's my first and only romantic relationship, we were very close and basically grew as adults together. We could talk about anything and understand each other. We shared the same values and interests. What changed, I think, is that we got into a routine and he got bored. During our argument, he said he was addicted to the attention the girl was giving him and that he felt I didn't show him I was in love with him enough anymore. I told him that even if it was true, he should have told me instead of having an affair. On one hand, I have my faults too and I could accept this as one of them. On the other, I was taking care of him and the house while he was sick. I don't think he believes it. I don't think he means it. But it makes me wonder whether I was actually a good wife for him, even though I am not responsible for his actions. Thanks again for your support, y'all. It's a lot, a lot to process, but it helps me. So much. Relevant comments OP on if she and her husband have kids and plans on getting counseling, OP kids are off the table. If we do go into counseling, and it goes exceptionally well, maybe we'll talk about it. But for now, the distrust is already there. He says I love you, but I never know whether it's to regain my trust, whether he means it or not. Even if he does, does he love me or is it a lie he tells himself? Dog of the bone. If you choose to stay, don't be surprised if in a year you find him talking to someone again. Cheaters are sneaky. They'll show remorse and swear they've changed. Meanwhile, they're smirking inside because they've started a new affair and think they can get away with it this time. Op. Thank you. It's obvious and well known. Once a cheater, always a cheater. But reading it helps me fight denial. I really need to break up with him, if not for myself, just to show him that actions have consequences. Final update. Too long, didn't read, we are divorcing, hooray. Trigger warning. Emotional affair, manipulation. Self-harm threats. Psychological abuse. 
Hey, I hope you are doing well. A huge amount of things have happened since then. I'll quickly summarize. Feel free to check my profile if you want to know more. It was a very, very unpleasant ride. So, my soon-to-be ex-husband had an emotional affair online and tried to make me greenlight it by asking for an open marriage where we'd be allowed to have side adventures. I refused and his affair partner dumped him. He begged me to try to reconcile with him, to which I agreed, while I was actually trying to prepare my exit. We both went to individual therapy, still am. We separated temporarily three times, but every time I came back it went terribly. He was desperate. He kept trying to cross my boundaries. Love bombing me. Playing the victim. Asking to touch me even though I established I didn't want to. Threatening to kill himself if we were to divorce. I could go on and on. This made me finally realize, along with my therapist's help, a lot of self-reflection and my exchanges on Reddit, that I was in an abusive relationship. Which is an important part, actually the most important part of this update. Please look up definitions and examples of abuse, because I had no idea that what my husband had been doing all these years, even before the affair, counted as such. In his case it was psychological abuse, manipulation, gaslighting, guilt-tripping, blame-shifting, emotional blackmail. Nothing aggressive or mean, which turned me into a very submissive partner over the years, always catering to his needs while erasing minds. I rationalize everything. It happened subtly and gradually, and I was too naive to see it for what it was. His emotional affair and open marriage proposal were the natural continuity of that. Of course, the more I tried to get away from him, the more manipulative he got. Now that I was aware of it, I knew what he was doing. But fighting years of conditioning, even if you recognize it and succeed, is fucking exhausting and disarming. So earlier today, I brought a friend home to assist me. We sat down, the three of us, and I told my husband we were over and I handed him the papers. It might sound dumb, but it's genuinely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I was terrified, yet he agreed. He repeatedly asked me if I was sure. He reminded me of the family we were planning to have and of our best memories together. Was it all for nothing? Apparently, yes. He was heartbroken, clearly mad and frustrated. But still, he agreed. He signed them and went back to his parents for now. We still have to go through the whole procedure, separate our assets, decide what to do with the house and all. And he still wants us to go to marriage counseling. But right now, I feel free. For the first time in months, the last hours have been a mix of tears, celebration and godly restful sleep. And I have to thank you guys again, because my first Reddit post was the wake-up call I needed to eventually finally get here. Better late than never. Thank you so much. Lots of love to you all. Relevant comments. Finest on Aurora 05. He reminded me of the family we were planning to have and of our best memories together. Was it all for nothing? Apparently, yes. He was heartbroken. That's a special kind of asshole. Was it all for nothing? After cheating on his partner, he sounds like an insufferable dickhead honestly. Congrats on your freedom. Op. I know right. The hypocrisy. The nerves of this man. The worst part is that he appears very charming to everyone who knows him myself included. Hell, a lot of people from our circle, who are aware of what he did, still think he's a good person who just lost himself for a while. I guess it's hard to accept that the ones we love can be terrible people too. Any decision for Dern 70. You have been through a long, hard journey, and it will take a while yet, but you are investing in yourself and your health and happiness. Good for you. Continue self-care and practice safety and security. Slow down and heal so that you will be strong and ready to seek and recognize true love. Wishing you a joyous future. You can do this. Op. Thank you. I'll do my best. I like to think the hardest part is behind me but the story taught me to expect the worst. Whatever happens though, from now on it's me first. I deserve love and happiness and I'll fight for it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.